Over the past six months, Ukrainian HIMARS batteries have struck Russians, gathered at training grounds for exercises or inspections at least five times, killing scores of Russian troops. The latest strike took place this week at an opening training ground in the Donetsk region, 15 miles from the front lines, Forbes analyst David Axe writes. He notes that video taken after the attack shows at least a dozen dead Russian troops and wrecked vehicles, suggesting that the Ukrainian missiles, likely GPS-guided M30-31s, fell while the Russians were training. At the same time, the analyst emphasizes this is not the first case in this area. There is a 100-square-mile area in the Donetsk region where there is a large concentration of Russian troops and a lot of lazy Russian commanders. Since February, Ukrainian HIMARS missiles have struck Russian training sites in the area at least three times, killing about 100 people, he writes. Two more Ukrainian missile strikes during the same period in southern and northeastern Ukraine added at least 150 more people to the death toll. As the analyst explains, the Ukrainian armed forces are tracking Russian military concentrations using UAVs, and the entire occupied territory of Ukraine is within the range of the M30-31 missiles for HIMARS or M39 missiles for Ukrainian M270 launchers. As Stacy Pettyjohn of the Center for a New American Security in Washington writes, the constant presence of drones on the battlefield makes it difficult to concentrate forces, while guided missiles make such concentration potentially lethal for troops. The risk cuts both ways, of course, and Russian rockets have occasionally struck Ukrainian trainees, too. But Russia has lost a lot more troops than Ukraine has. As many as 728,000 Russian soldiers have been killed wounded or captured in Ukraine, the Economist reported in July, citing leaked Pentagon documents. Even taking into account Russia's greater population, 144 million Russians versus 38 million Ukrainians, extreme losses are having a disproportionately corrosive effect on the Russian armed forces, however. The Kremlin is mobilizing 30,000 fresh troops a month just to replace battlefield casualties and speeding these new recruits through training in order to get them to the front faster. Discipline and competence are slipping. The Russian armed forces in Ukraine have extremely limited capabilities for conducting maneuver warfare due to both the loss of mobility assets and the lack of training among headquarters and troops, the Ukrainian Center for Defense Strategies explained. Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered the Kremlin to recapture Kursk by October the 1st and Russian troops dutifully launched a counter-attack along the western edge of the Ukrainian salient. Ukrainians in Kursk are under attack at the farthest reach of their supply lines, threading into the oblast from the Ukrainian city of Sumy. But German Merker tabloid says that Kiev's troops are delivering effective pinpricks and are even able to advance into other Russian regions. It is noted that while a HIMARS attack by Ukraine destroyed an important pontoon bridge in the region, Putin's troops apparently suffered another heavy blow in Kursk, which resulted in bitter losses for Russia. According to the Ukrainian Air Force, Putin's troops were repelled in a battle lasting several hours during an assault attack. According to the Ukrainian Air Force, the Russian unit's attack took place on September the 13th and 14th. On September the 13th, and 14 military vehicles attacked the positions of the Ukrainian airborne troops. According to the report, two tanks, 11 infantry fighting vehicles, and an armored personnel carrier were used. The attempt to break through the defensive positions of the Ukrainian armed forces failed. In a heavy battle, lasting several hours, the Ukrainian paratroopers proved that they are better in military matters and have mastered the science of winning with flying colors, said the Ukrainian Air Force about the battle in Kursk. Putin's troops are said to have suffered heavy losses, including five airborne infantry fighting vehicles, one enemy tank, and one armored personnel carrier. Russia is also said to have lost several dozen soldiers in the attack. The rest of the survivors are said to have fled. Despite the reported deployment of 35,000 Russian soldiers, the counter-offensive following Ukraine's Kursk advance is at a standstill. Despite the deployment, Putin's troops cannot currently celebrate or report any major successes, even though there have been reports of the recapture of 10 villages in the oblast. Experts from the U.S. think tank Institute for the Study of War take a similar view. According to their analysis, 
the Russian military will probably have to move additional elements from other parts of the region to Kursk. This is necessary in order to form a group capable of conducting a sustained counter-offensive.